Hey everyone, um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to explain how I have taken more of a flipped uh, classroom approach in my actual classroom, kind of let you in on some of my tips and tricks in the learning management system and how you can use some uh, technology tools in order to make your classroom uh, into more of a flipped classroom. So here is my uh, Google Classroom that I use specifically just for math. Um, and what I'm going to be highlighting is how I take each of these lessons and sort of make them flipped. Um, this right here, this lesson 17 and 18, I like to put in a lot of links for where my students can go in and they can click on different things. The first thing that you're going to notice is that there is, in this case, there's two Ed Puzzle videos that I would ask for students to complete. Um, those Ed Puzzle videos are over here, where students are looking at dividing a two-digit number, and there's two parts to it that we would span over two days. So they would complete this Ed Puzzle video along with an accompanying note sheet. So whatever is happening in the video, students should also be recording on a piece of paper um, just to hold them accountable to make sure that they are following along with the video. And then as well as looking at their responses to the questions in the Ed Puzzle. I enjoy using these Ed Puzzle original videos, but I've also found that this YouTuber by the name of Dwayne uh, Habecker or Bob Haybecker, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his last name. Um, he has already gone through and created help videos for the entire uh, Eureka Math series, uh, really, from grade one all the way up to, I believe he goes up to grade, yeah, grade five, um, with tutorials for every single lesson for every single module. So I've been sort of piggybacking on his work and taking the videos that he's already gone and created and putting them into Edpuzzle. And sometimes I'll take the time to customize them uh, with specific questions that I think my students would benefit from the most. I don't always have time to do it completely and totally. So sometimes I'll, you know, again, piggyback off of another teacher who has already gone and remixed some of his videos with their own questions and I'll sort of just rely on their work. So I like to push that out to my students again with that accompanying note sheet. That keeps some of them occupied for a little bit of time. And something I'm looking to do is to incorporate more fluency activities and more tactile, you know, hands-on learning activities away from the computer screen um, in small group. Something like flashcards or timed, uh, you know, multiplication, addition, or subtraction, division drills. Um, those are something that I would really like to incorporate into my classroom as like a, a station for students to rotate towards. So. Um, these Edpuzzle videos would be a station. That fluency piece would be a station as well. Another piece that I want to uh, to point out is these Google Slides that uh, come from the Embark website. They have a ton of stuff that already exists out there to sort of um, narrow down your focus for a specific lesson. So again, we're looking at lesson, in this case, lesson 18. Here's a student objective to find whole number quotients and remainders. And these right here are actually the fluency pieces that they want students to be able to do embedded within the structured lesson. So work on skip counting by fours, skip counting by sixes, um, and then looking at trying to decompose an actual division problem using expanded form. So taking 48 divided by two and splitting it into expanded form to do 40 divided by two, and then eight divided by two. And they do a couple, couple different examples here, as well as finally getting down to the application problem, which is just almost like a daily word problem that goes along with the skills that are being learned for that day. So this is another really good tool that I like to incorporate into uh, class as well. The next thing that you'll notice is this class kick uh, activity right here. And I like to use class kick as a means for exit tickets. So after students have gone and they've done the lesson and they've worked on uh, the Ed Puzzle video by themselves, they've come and they've sought out help with me if they need help. The fluency piece, the fluency aspect, both on Google Slides and the different center activities that I have for them to do. Also completing the Zern online component, we would wrap up our lesson here with a uh, exit ticket. Now, 
Classkick does a really good job of allowing me just really quick at a glance some really informative data that I can use to uh, drive instruction. So um, we haven't completed lesson 18 yet, but we can look at today's uh, lesson 17, where we were looking at finding whole number quotients and remainders. So I went through and I actually inserted these um, answer boxes here that are coded to accept the correct answer. And you can see that if a student gets the answer correct, I can decide if I want it to be worth a point for like a classwork grade, or it could be worth no points and students could just see whether or not they're getting the answer correct or not. So this student went through and they filled in most of the boxes correctly. They actually ended up with an eight out of nine, which is pretty good. Um, they answered the quotient correctly. They answered the remainder correctly, but they did not subtract correctly. So that gives me some really interesting data to be able to go back to class with and say, this is something that we need to practice. We still need uh, some practice on these long division steps and uh, sort of stringing those steps together. Uh, so once we get to dividing three digit numbers or dividing four digit numbers, make sure that we're going through all of the steps successfully without error. So that's sort of how I'm trying to take a flipped approach into uh, into my classroom. Uh, the The combination of these tools with a learning management system, Classkick is huge for taking a more of a flipped approach. YouTube videos that can be parlayed into ed puzzle videos, and then again taking more of that station rotation approach where students are still doing some of the basic fact fluency with flashcards or like timed drills are ways that I think I can implement into my class. This is some of what I'm doing. This is also some things that I would, you know, like to maybe get to. Um, so I think that there's still some room for growth for me, um, but I'm very, very, very uh, big into the flipped approach and being able to sort of duplicate myself across the room with these ed puzzle videos and making my time in the classroom as worthwhile with the students and making sure that I am providing the ones who need the most help the most help and the ones who feel like they get it and they're, you know, flying on their own. They don't need as much help and support from me. It's more of a hands off approach from them and they can really go ahead and sort of uh, uh, build their own learning. So that's sort of how I'm using a flipped approach um, in my classroom. I'd be happy to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below, um, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.